Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about high-level in-memory OLTP architecture. Before watching this video, I highly recommend you watching my another video about execution workflow in SQL Server to fully understand this video. And also, if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe. Let's get started. First of all, let's discuss about high-level SQL Server architecture without in-memory OLTP technology, which is illustrated here. For example, you are making a select query, okay? So when a client makes a request, the query is passed to CMD parser, where the query is parsed and binded, right? After this process, the query is passed to optimizer if there is not query plan in the cache. This query plan then passed to query executor uh, and access methods. Access methods connect to buffer manager that will bring data from buffer pool. The extracted data then pass back to the client. Pretty much straightforward. In the case of data change queries, for example, insert or delete, the process is a little bit different. When query reaches access methods, this transaction is first locked in transaction log file by transaction manager, then data is changed in buffer pool and acknowledgement is sent back to the client. Okay? While you developing in memory OLTP, one of the main goals of developers was to integrate this feature in a way without significant changes to the current architecture. And they made it very perfectly, I can say. What they did? Firstly, they added in-memory OLTP engine, where non-durable in-memory table and indexes are located. The data file of these tables are placed in memory optimized uh, table file group on disk. Okay, we call it file group. And uh, uh, transaction log files are saved in the same location with on disk tables. Okay, on disk our, our usual tables. When SQL Server is restarted, these tables are recovered by bringing the data each time. I mean, it's not uh, only once. Every time when SQL is restarted, these tables are regenerated, recovered by bringing the data from file group, data files, and log files accordingly. Okay, now the main question remains, how can clients ca can access these in-memory tables, right? Clients can access these tables by using two ways. First is natively compiled sorted procedures, and second one is by using usual T-SQL. Natively compiled sorted procedures are specially developed for in-memory OLTP engine and uh, offered high performance while working with in-memory tables. Suppose client is making query by using natively compiled sorted procedures. When it reaches the optimizer, the next component will be in-memory OLTP compiler. This compiler is also has also been developed specially for in-memory OLTP. Okay? Then the data will be extracted and passed back to the client. As you can see, if you use natively compiled sorted procedure, you cannot access the usual on these tables in buffer pool, right? And if you want to access, if you want to access both in memory OLTP and on disk tables at the same time, there is a solution. You should use T-SQL. There is a component called query interrupt, which extracts data from uh, in memory of LTP engine to access methods. As a result, access methods uh, can get data from both buffer pool and in memory OLTP. However, if you do not use on disk tables in your query and if you use only in memory OLTP in your query, you had better use natively compiled storage procedure. Why? The answer is you can give you can get a high performance boost compared to the usual T-SQL if you use um, co co natively compiled storage procedure, okay? So, uh, this is the architecture of in-memory OLTP. And uh, I'm going to talk about more about OLTP in my future series in this course. Please do not forget to subscribe for my future series for in-memory OLTP. Thank you.